It's KM Geekly! This week, we're talking about Picard Season 3. We're also going to talk about Hello Tomorrow, and we're each going to give a rad thing. And now, your host, Mike Indeglio! What is up, team? Welcome to KM Geekly. Just a sneak peek at two geeks chatting about some of the things, getting them through their weekend. Mm, mm, I yeah. am just so overjoyed, so honored to be joined by my co-hostess with the mostess that's mr keith varney at keith varney on your youtube and instagram and all the good stuff keith how you doing this weekend I, slash monday i'm doing okay there was just somebody on my stoop which i'm looking up at wondering get off my stoop get off my lawn god damn it so that's uh that, that's sort of what i'm at but it's it's a beautiful sunny day here in but it is New winter Jersey. again. It should be pointed out here on the East Coast. At least we've returned to winterdom. It's it's winter a little bit, but it's nice and sunny. So uh, our 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 little dog Pretzel, like she wanted to walk around. She did. She walked the whole perimeter of the house, which for oh. her is is quite a thing. Okay, That's pretzel. quite a journey for uh, a little blind Chihuahua whose back legs don't work very well. But she had a lovely time wandering around. How are you doing? I'm doing okay, Keith. Today was a you know, I, I, I've I've mentioned my 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 dad, my dear dad, uh, many times on this podcast for many different reasons. But today, I want to bring up because I was setting up some, <laughs> I was fiddling with some speakers in my living mm -hmm. room this morning mm -hmm. and trying to get the crossover frequencies right. You know, just like OCDing tech stuff. What you? Yeah, right. And so my brother was joking with me on text. He's like, oh my God, your dad now. Because I think I've told the story even on this show maybe about my dad with the getting the Polk audio Dolby surround or whatnot. And he would just sit there and watch Yanni Lav the Acropolis. So while I was <laughs> setting up the, the speakers, I put on Yanni Lav the Acropolis, which someone mm -hmm. had lovingly up res to 4K and 5.1 surround on YouTube. So I was playing that. Are you sure it wasn't you? <laughs> it might as well have been. So anyway... Uh, and then I just like texted to my family. We were having a good laugh about it. So I was, I was, I was giving dad a shout out and I was laughing about how, or not laughing. I was enjoying how, uh, enough time has passed that like stupid stuff like this is, is funny and, uh, like warming rather than like sad. Right. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, so anyway, that I wanted to give a shout out to Yanni live the Acropolis. I got to tell you guys. So I've, I've also, have I, did I tell you I saw Yanni live? I went no. to a Yanni concert. Wow, the things we learn about each other. So apropos not to my father, uh, just so happens my mom's best friend, like my mom has this friend who was our next door neighbor growing up, uh, Paige is her name, and it was her birthday, and she's done so much stuff, I don't even have to enumerate, she's done so much stuff for our family and just been a good friend of my mom and all these things, and it turns out she <laughs> loves Yanni, uh, completely s separate from my connection to Yanni, and so at the time, my buddy's uh, wife worked for the Man Music Center here in Philadelphia, which is a big outdoor concert venue. And Yanni was on tour and he was playing the man. And so I hooked it up and we all went. And uh, actually, it's a funny story. So we go to Yanni live. Me and Jen were pre-gaming. We're like rocking and rolling. We're having a great grand old time. My mom, we drag, drug her along because it was her friend. Right, and, sure. Uh, she fell asleep within minutes at a live outdoor mm -hmm. concert. Yeah, uh, and then yeah. woke up and then decided to read her Kindle at a live concert. She was, my mom is, my mom is unique. She's reading a Kindle, but her Kindle died, Keith. Her bat, she didn't charge the battery. So she nodded off again. And me and mm -hmm. Jen are yelling and we're screaming and we're hooting and hollering. And my mom wakes up from a dead sleep and turns to my wife. Now, folks, you've only seen CEO Jen pop in here and there on various shows. She is just like the sweetest person. She, she might be the nicest, yeah. sweetest person I have ever met. And I have no idea why she chose you, but. Yeah. Keith's not, I know Keith, we, me and Keith have a, a fun rivalry, but he's not the only person to share that sentiment. <laughs> uh, so anyway, my mom wakes up from a dead sleep and turns to my wife, Jen, the nicest person on the planet, and just goes, will you shut the hell up? Oh my God. <laughs> so if that doesn't explain my mother, I, I don't know what does. Um, so anyway, that was our, our Yanni experience. Hold on a second. Wow, she's quite the character, your mother. She, yes, that is accurate. She she deserves her own show, I think. Um, I think that's what's happening. Maybe, maybe she gets a segment. Yeah, of Rita. Like, so a Rita is like, like, what does Rita hate this week? 
Oh, so many things. I, I got. I was supposed to go fix her bidet tonight, but I got out of it. Thank God. <laughs> I waited for you to take a swig of that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, thanks, mm-hmm. Yanni. Um, Keith, let's let's wow. keep it flowing. Anything you want to chat about before we just kind of jump in? No. Well, I mean, I'll 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 say this. What I was working on today. Uh, we we I was working on both of our new headshots. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish so, I had them uh, handy. I'd pop them up there, but maybe next time. Maybe next time. Yeah. So, uh, Mike, as an actor and Jen, you both got new headshots done. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, you know, I'm not auditioning anymore, so I don't necessarily need them for acting, but I do need them for all the other nonsense that I do. Um, so uh, you you paid for your headshots. They came out amazing. Yep. Uh, Michael Kushner, uh, terrific photographer in New York City. Uh, his book is now just out. You can go check it out. Yeah. Multi, how to then, be a multi hyphenate uh, or something. Yeah, something. Yeah, something like that. And mine, mine were shot by uh, Keith Varney and his cell phone. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, I, I think that was it was fun. I did some did some touch up work on both of our headshots. Yep. Because and, you uh, know this takes work, folks. What you're seeing here on your screen, it may be upscaled to 4K. But let me tell you, <laughs> if you'd like to I, downscale it, join our yeah, Patreon. If, if you <laughs> wish it weren't upscaled, yeah. No, and and I I think. You with your with your silver silver fox hair, and me with just the general thisness, we've both sort of accepted uh, who we are. So I'm actually for the first time in my life trying to select headshots that actually look like me, mm-hmm. not like find some angle where I'm like twenty percent less utterly uneffable. Yeah, it's interesting because you know not to get go too far into the weeds with it, but so like headshots like any art form, I guess, have go through various phases of looks. Like something like when I first got out of college, like the super bokeh background and like a like a hoodie and like a close up was kind of the thing. And then they were, for a while, they were all using the like 90s, like jaggy edge frames. And then, for, you know, it's it's gone <laughs> like now. so 90s. What's in right now is like really bright pop of color and like Photoshopping, not, I don't say Photoshop, but like, really touching up, really making your, smoothing the skin and whatnot. And it's interesting because like you said, and we talked about on our, our New Year's resolutions, I'm not interested in any of that. I just, whatever lines I got, I earned them. I, mm-hmm. I, I am, I is what I is. Just make me look like that, but like the good version. <laughs> there oh. we go. Oh, he's got it. <laughs> yeah, there I am. That like looks like me. Yeah, see? There you go, Mike. See, good. Good headshots. I've I've lost control of the. Uh, there it is. Yeah. That one's a good one. Came out. So so there you go. There's there's Mike's fancy new headshots. What about you, Keith? Pull them up. Come on, let's do it. Oh, well, okay, hold on. I got. Don't break gotta... the internet while you're at it. Guess what? Y- you paid for this. <laughs> Brian Kaufman, Casey Clark, Jason Moe, Andrew Hayes, Jorge Navo, and the mysterious Wharf's Boot Shift CRM Productions. Charles Babbage. Uh, the the famous Charles Babbage of the Babbage mm. Babbages, uh, the Nikolai ba- Ivanovich ba- 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 Lobachevsk-Varney, at Grim underscore toys, Delusions at Noon. You can join the team, patreon.com slash K. And M, Keith, how we doing? There he is. There Look we at that go. guy. Norm. Hey. <laughs> no, I just, it felt very sitcom-y. <laughs> it was giving me a sitcom vibe. Not that you look like Norm. Go to hell. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. That one, that one's fun. I mean, that's that Keith. There's Keith. That, it just looks like yeah, me, which is sad. <laughs> there's so me. Sad. Yeah, hands are good. I like a hand. I like some like action movement. Yeah, yeah. So uh, lots, at the twenty dollar of- patron level, you can have these pictures for your uh, for your personal collection. Uh, I I don't I don't. I, look, what you choose to do with these headshots of your own time is very much your decision. However, all right, Keith. So I don't, can, Keith. Listen, can you hear that? Mm. <laughs> it's you, it, it's it, it, wait. Is it the subscribers dropping off from last week? No, it and, sounds and, and like that. And then whoever's that. left dropping out now. <laughs> it sounds like that, Keith. But it's mm. actually the sound of the megaton bomb drop this week with the premiere of Picard. Yeah. Season three. Now, I've been, I have to wait until Keith watches at least three episodes and says I'm spoiler free until I can go in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, because I've heard, all I know is that it's like the next season, it's like a continuation of next gen. They're all back. They're here. They're all buddy copping together. It's a big family reunion. Is that true? Can I watch? What is, does it feel like Trek? 
what, where are we? Tell me everything you got. Yeah, well, I, I'm going to say all of this with the preface that at the beginning of season two, I thought they had addressed a lot of my issues with season one of Picard, um, sort of tonally and the and the the time and the place, and then it very quickly deviated from that and like, oh no, this this sort of went off the rails. So um, I'm going in with moderated expectations that they might not might not necessarily stick with the things that I'm enjoying about it, but I really enjoyed uh, the season premiere of Picard season three. I thought it did a, a really good job of finally starting to integrate a little bit of the tone that we've all been missing. Um, there's a certain lightness, there's a certain um, humor and optimism to it that sort of has been lost. Um, you know, if I have a complaint about New Trek, it's that it's all just a little too dire. Right. Every right. little thing is, oh God. So there, so if everything is at a at, at an 11, everything is at a peak emotionally, stakes wise, ah! then nothing's at an 11. Then, then there's, there's nowhere to go. You're just sort of, you're stuck at like, fr- you know, frantic plot character, whatever. This felt like it, it was able to breathe a little bit more, spend a little bit more time with the characters. It continued, um, you know, little bits and pieces from the storyline previously, but really, uh, moved us forward. They've done, uh, they basically dumped all of the cast from the first two seasons other than Picard and seven, um, which, you know, I thought they were, they were all very good actors. They all did a good job, but it, it never hit. None of the characters really popped. I think because of the, the storytelling didn't ever give them a chance to breathe mm-hmm. uh, a little bit. So um, I don't think, I don't think it's their fault. I think it was just sort of this, the storytelling got a little much, much, um, this felt much more familiar. Um, I, I thought the uh, we spent a lot of time with Picard and Riker. We 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 haven't met the rest of the cast other than Beverly. Um, so I, I like that they're introducing a little bit of slow, but but now we have a we have a Picard Riker old man buddy cop thing happening, which I thought was was really delightful and being able to have this sort of same sense of humor about their aging that uh, the later original series movies had Mm -hmm. where they were able to like, you know, have fun with it. And I thought that was really nice. I I really enjoyed that. It was great to be back on a ship. Um, I, you know, I, I, I understand for reasons they wanted to like not be on a ship again. And I was just like, I missed it. You know, Put them on a ship. Get them in uniform. Let's let's deal with Starfleet. You can do all this. We don't have to be in the bowels of a winery. Let's let's be here. Let's do it. Um, so uh, I, I really liked all of that. Um, I liked you know, the the main new new character they introduced uh, is sort of an antagonist captain played by uh, Todd Stashwick, who um, I thought I I love the character. I love the dynamic. I love that we have sort of a a villain to to battle against, but at the same time, um, it's not that he was illogical. <laughs> he just is a bit of a dick. Hmm. Um, and I really like Todd Stashwick as an actor. Um, and I, I had to figure out what I had seen him in. There was a, talk about, I'm going to give you a 15-year-old recommendation for a failed TV show. Um, he was on a show called The Riches which was an FX show um, that was Eddie Izzard and Minnie Driver. Okay. And it was about a like family of um, grifters trying to go straight in a community. And, and just listen to this cast. You've, you've got Ed, Eddie Izzard, you know, at her peak, you had Minnie Driver, Shannon Woodward, Noel Fisher, no Fisher, Margot Martindale was, was in it. Jared Harris was in it like this is incredible cast um and a really fun suspenseful suspenseful show um it it just it died after two seasons but i thought it was great anyway so i was like oh he's from that show that i really liked a long time ago and i don't really remember um but you know on on the whole i really give it a thumbs up the the other thing that i really appreciated and noticed is how much work they did um in the score mm. and in the musical cues, making constant references to the past. References, there there are a lot of uh, musical references to the motion picture. 
um, the, the first one. Um, but also in the in the outro, they do the credits at the end now, and there's all like a million little Easter eggs and hints in it. But it was also like a whole compilation of um, the scores from the movie. So we we hear First Contact, we hear um, Insurrection, and and so like this. I thought as a as a musician and someone who pays attention to this, I'm like, oh wow, there's so many references to other pieces of Star Trek score, and I think that really helped bring that sense of nostalgia that I want, bring in that like, oh, we are continuing this story. This isn't some like mirror universe thing. This felt like this was in this universe. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see episode two. I really hope they're able to stay in this tone and this world because that's really exciting. So kind of a esoteric question. It's mm. hard to kind of, but you can give me a vibe. The show is very, TNG is very much of its time, right? And then the movie's, the movies kind of upped the production value and, and upscaled the kind of visuals and the design mm-hmm. and whatnot for the most yeah. part. Does this, I, I imagine, skews more towards the movie version, but or does it have its kind of own design or and visual flair? Does it feel like a separate thing? Is it is it cohesive to where it lived in the television show, or is it a kind of a, a whole separate thing? This is the most cohesive to next gen of the of the seasons of it. Like we're like we're now starting to see Elcar screens. We're starting, you know, so there's there's visual and audio little cues in it in a way that it really wasn't that well integrated in the first two. I know they wanted to like refresh it and have new technology or whatever, but it didn't feel like the natural flow from what we had seen. It felt like they reset. Yeah, and that was my my. I really was excited about the first season, and it's all I've watched thus far. But I what what kind of. You know, it was doing it. It just felt like it was it was trying very hard to not be right. Star Trek, right? Like it was, or not? Right. It was, yeah. It was more like a contemplative sort of period, not period. Uh, uh, yeah, it was, showcase it was, piece for Picard, like a very like right. moody thing, very Hamlet. It just, it, but it didn't feel like Picard. It didn't feel like right. Star Trek. It you know, like it was tremendously acted, really well done, but it wasn't didn't feel like the characters we knew. It didn't feel like a progression from the characters we knew. It felt like a they scrubbed the whole thing. And you're right. They really did try to dissociate themselves from Star Trek. You'll notice in the logo below us here, the show is now called Star Trek Picard. Right. It used to be just Picard. Well, and they're also trying to launch, you know, Paramount Plus is still trying to find its footing. So they, I think they realized quickly they needed a course correction, but like this could be our show pe- showcase piece and should be. And so, yeah, I mean, this is the last season of it, but but you know, they they did the same thing with Enterprise. Um, the first couple of seasons of Star Trek Enterprise, they just called it Enterprise because for whatever reason they didn't want to add the Star Trek name to it, realize, oh god, this is not working. Right. And so then it became Star Trek Enterprise. And I, they made the same mistake again. It, it, it was odd. Why would you not want to associate with the thing that you are? But anyway, th- this one, this one didn't feel embarrassed to be Star Trek. In a way that the first two seasons kind of felt that way a little bit. Do you know any of the like the behind the scenes, the what and the how and the the machinations like of how this all came to be? Like who did somebody request it? Was it the creative decision, or was was Stewart like get my boys over here, or what? Well, I I do know that at the beginning it was Stewart himself who didn't want. Right. It to be a reunion show didn't didn't want it to be a continuation of the previous uh, previous line, but I know that the cast is incredibly close. Yeah, like that cast in particular, like they're all still best friends and and they see each other all the time, and so it's a family, and so um, they're all really happy to be together again. So I I think either. I don't know if it was a network saying like, hey, we're not going to renew you for season three if you don't bring your buddies back. Or it was Stuart saying like, you know what, let's let's do this. And they've definitively definitively said this is it. Yes, they have said this is the final season of Picard. But obviously, if it if it takes off, if it works, well, if it takes off that they're laying ground. I mean, I, I think Seven of Nine probably should get her own show. I think any one of these characters could branch into their own show. I mean, why, you know, why can't it be Star Trek Worf? Why can't it right. be Star Trek whatever? Like, I, I think that's certainly a possibility depending on how this all goes. 
Um, and I'm sure they'll branch further into the lore because, you know, Star Trek Janeway, you know, Deep Space 10, let's do this. Um, so those are my initial thoughts. Uh, completely aware that it all might be completely different three episodes in and I'll be like, uh, who knows? Well, you know, it's your first, it's the, you're, you're hooked thus far. And, it's a good uh, first impression though. Yeah. And that's what I'd like to talk about. My first piece. We'll check back in with Picard. Cause I know it's kind of uh, central to what we do here on the channel, uh, in many regards. So I want to talk about a show called hello tomorrow, uh, starring Billy Crudup, um, who every time I see him, <laughs> I'm reminded at how I think he's just one of the best actors of our generation and doesn't, I mean, he's respected and he's often uh, touted, but he's not the first person that comes to mind when you think, you know, you don't put him in the in, in the same brain space as your Hanks is. Um, but he, I think he's, uh, or your, uh, your Mark Rylance is or whatnot. I just think he's, everything he does, he knocks out of the park. Uh, and so this is one of those shows that caught my eye for a variety of reasons. One, I love him. Two, uh, my favorite television sh experience of last year, I think, has to, had to be, and I think I talked about it, uh, was Severance here on Apple mm. TV. I just think it was one of the best first seasons of television I've ever seen. Uh, is from from a story perspective, acting perspective, design perspective, production perspective, and one thing Apple TV is doing that I, you know, not all their shows are winners, uh, but I will say this. You know, whereas Keith and I have, we're talking, this is, a, I'm going to go a long way around the block here, but. That'll be first. We were talking, Keith, you and I off air uh, during uh, the Super Bowl about how it's really kind of crazy that pro network production hasn't caught up, right? There's still, sports are still filmed many times in 720p, right? Yeah. Uh, crazy. Just, it, it's just, the money isn't there for them, even with all the advertising, even in hockey advertising that's ruining the ruining this the television production uh isn't paying for they're shooting for the lowest common common denominator they're assuming most people are watching on their phones or on crappy tvs so why upscale they even why even get just getting 60p or 60 frames per second was a big deal in sports yeah whereas apple tv disney plus some of these streaming services are going the other way and they are throwing all kinds of money at the production value of these shows and in their streaming visuals, uh, and hoping that people's technology will, assuming people's technology will come up, Apple has a very, very specific visual design of their shows. They are all filmed in Dolby Vision. They are all filmed in, uh, you know, um, the highest chroma sampling, you know, your 444s. Four, four, they're just beautiful to look at. The, the Atmos surround sound is like set up for 11, point, 11 channel systems and it will downscale to whatever you've got. It's just they are, no matter what you're watching it on, it's gonna look like a million dollars. Yeah. On top of that, they are spending money on incredible casts. Like Severance has an incredible cast of people. So this show, uh, Hello Tomorrow, the other reason it caught my eye was. Wait, wait, I have, I have a thought to interject before you go on, sure. on, on that topic yeah. because otherwise I'll never remember to go back. I, I think part of the reason for that is the longevity of the product they are creating. Yeah. Right? I think the difference between sports and and this sort of a thing is that they're 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 future proofing their product, right? A little bit longer as we progress in our technology or whatever. They're hoping that this is going to meet the stand broadcast standards in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um and for each of these shows, you know, they're only using one or two cameras, right? Yeah. In terms of the expense, because I, if you think about it with with the NFL, right, um, and I, and this is one of the things that they talk about, right, the, the, their production budgets, they're a doing it live, they're using 15, 20 cameras per game, and they might have eight games going mm -hmm. simultaneously. So you're not upgrading one or two cameras, as well as your bandwidth and your and all every one of your graphics and every one well, of your. I'll your say, whole I will truck. say I I am not, I am aware of that. Like in fact, I, so not to belabor the point, Digital Trends on on YouTube, they have an incredible video they just released last week explaining the expense of even upscaling their 1080p feed to 4K. For each 4K camera, they need four production consoles. So there are four separate feeds that come wow. in that they have to digitize to put out. So 
for every camera, they need four. So that's four it's times absolutely every, crazy. It, the, when you scale it, it's insane. It, it's a, it's insane. So that's 160 cameras that Fox might be using in a right. weekend for all those things. And, and sports, at least for most people, are disposable, right? You watch it, it's gone. They don't make any money on the game after it's aired. They don't have a, it doesn't have a life moving forward. It's very ephemeral. It's right there and then it's gone. You never I, I look back on it, but most people it's 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 there, it's gone, it's disposable. So I think that's also part of it. So well, go ahead. That being said, Disney, Apple, they have the billions upon billions to say we're gonna spend the money and make it look pretty, right? The eye candy. We're gonna mm-hmm. do all that stuff because their market, the market is catching up, right? It's not expensive to get a 4K TV anymore. It's hard to find one that isn't, nope. you know? So they are, it is Apple, it isn't apples to apples, but that was just, when you and watch sports, their and then you watch something like this, you recognize right. how crappy network yes. television <laughs> looks right now. Yes. Um, it's funny, I, I, you, I use YouTube TV and often I'll read in the subreddit and whatnot, people complaining about the visual quality and they're like, at the end of the day, it's you can only do what you can do with the, what you're being fed from the networks. Right. Um, anyway, so I talked about the game Fallout a few weeks ago. Fallout takes place in the sort of, if you think about Pleasantville, the movie, that fi- that like science fiction 50s idea of what the future would be in the Fallout, 50s. Continue. Um, but the problem with Fallout is all that cool tech is all just kind of in the first five minutes, and then it's it gets blown up and it's just like you find the the relics of it throughout the show. Now, what if we did a whole drama television show in that 50s where the future oh, has cool. come, right? Yeah. So you've got your robots that are very much, that are very uh, practical, right? It's not just like- right. um, Inspired by what they thought the future was gonna be in the 50s. Right. right. So it's what if that is real, the cars that kind of hover, but it's just kind of, it's like Cuba. It's like they take a '50s car and it now hovers, and your right, right. <clears throat> your waitresses who are actually just like vacuum cleaners, kind of thing. Um, and Billy Crudup here and ha- his team, a-, a crack team of salespeople. Uh, you've got Hank Azaria, yeah. Hanifa Wood, Allison Pill, Nicholas Pode, and Deshaun Williams. Just an incredible cast, a little core cast so far. I'm two episodes it's a in. Great cast, yeah. yeah. And they are ostensibly to not say too much, selling timeshares-ish uh, on the moon, right? So they're, the, it huh. used to be just the rich and famous could afford to fly and live on the moon, but now they're right. offering it to. So they're going door to door, door to door salesmen. Instead of selling uh, encyclopedias like you would in the 50s. Or vacuum cleaners, yeah, right. They're doing uh, timeshares on the moon. Oh, it's awesome. The conceit is awesome. As you can imagine from an Apple TV Plus show and also this type of show. I've mentioned it's very in the universe of Severance. It's very, it's, there's clearly more behind the scenes. We start to learn some things. I haven't even really got to the central mystery yet, uh, but there's enough character stuff happening. There's enough dialogue that's happening. It has it has a very tangible style, the show, the, pr- the production. Uh, it's created by uh, Amit Bahala and Lucas Jansen. Apologies if I screwed those names up. Only three episodes have been released, and then they're going to go to a weekly release schedule, which is a lot of eps- a lot of shows. HBO Max is going in that universe now. Uh, it, it once again it this it it looks so great. I want to live in this world. Well, I don't know if I actually want to live in this world, but it's it's so vibrant. Uh, a, a colleague of mine who I did a show with years ago is head of the puppetry design of all the robots and making sure that the oh, gadgets, cool. it yeah. looks practical. I know a lot. Of, there's a lot of CGI in there as well, but it looks practical. It feels practical. The performances are great. It pops off the screen. I really can't say enough about this show so far. Two episodes in. The performances, excellent. I mean, for Billy Crop aside, anytime you get to see Hank Azaria do anything, incredible. Yes. Yep. Um, and he's playing like a cool kind of character. I don't know what to say other than I'm I'm like you said I'm I'm really excited about where the show could be going, uh, where it has gone so far. If you have Apple TV Plus and if you have any Apple device, you probably have free Apple TV Plus at this point. Uh, I'm in. I also saw a preview at the front of this for a new. Um, uh, oh my god, what's his name? A Eugene Levy piece where it's basically. Uh, Follow him around doing uncomfortable things. He's he's. It's a travel show with Eugene Levy, who is basically a curmudgeon, huh. which I am so excited about. 
I'm, so I'm well on my way to becoming Eugene Lim. Yeah, me too. Between actually, if you were to, our our love child is is Eugene Levy. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Uh, With your eyebrows and my curmudgeon So, hello tomorrow. I'm super in. Uh, get it while the getting's good, Keith. You said you had a, a feeling about Fallout. Oh, yes. My, here's my, here's, you said the problem with Fallout. Let me tell you the problem with Fallout. The problem with Fallout is, is I literally, just in the last two weeks, saw that Fallout 76 was on discount, and I really enjoyed Fallout 4. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I've been waiting for 70. I didn't want to pay 60 bucks for it, yeah. but like, whatever. It's $10. Great. I download. I'm all excited. I'm like, hell yeah. Let's do this. To find out it's 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 online the whole time. Yeah, it's PvP, basically. I hate it. Yeah. That's why, why are it, there other people I don't know bothering me while I'm trying to play the damn game? That's why it's free now, Keith, because it's bad. What are you doing? The whole thing that made the Fallout 4 great is your, I'm on my journey. I'm on my narrative. I don't want some 12 year old like. Well, that's why you don't play Fallout 76. Also, that's what ruined. Well, it didn't ruin because you could kind of. Well, somebody not do told it. me that before I bothered Fallout to download 4, it. Fallout 4, I was digging it, except like, stop making me build my base. I, I don't want it. So anytime no, it was I like. I like building the base. It was I like, actually like that. Yeah, part. it's it's for some people. It's not for some people. That's why like Animal Crossing, I'm like, eh, I don't want to make a house. I'm I, trying to I buy love one building myself. stuff, but I just. I'm like, what? There's somebody else here. There's some other douchebag. I'll talk about it next week. But so real quick, what, one of the things I'm looking forward to this next week uh, is Netflix just released it. So Keith, I like golf. I know it's weird. I know it's one of those sports that's like, the only thing I don't really You're love- You're a white guy over 40. You're supposed to. I know. But one of the things I don't love about golf is like the golfing part. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> it's just like, it's not particularly exciting. Although what I've never I think, gone once in my life. What I think is cool about it is that, so here's- here's a professional sport right where every game it's kind of like a poker tournament like somebody could win right like you you get paid when you win right yes there's endorsements and stuff side 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 but basically you have to win to make money so if right. you're just like a schlub who made the tour and you're like bottom cut you're work where you're ranked 600th in the world or whatever you could still win and win all the millions but the, the frequency with which the top players win and under that pressure like it's, golf's hard, so yeah. it's 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 pretty incredible. Kind of like NASCAR that, like that. Yeah, it's pretty incredible that the like the the top tier actually persists. Uh, but there's a bunch apparently a bunch of crazy stuff that happens behind the scenes, and these guys freak out and they like get the yips and they can't win for a while. And so, what if you could like take all of the drama mm -hmm. and just like fast forward to the exciting parts and skip all the like golfy bits in the beginning? Well, Netflix was like, this is a great idea. And they have this new docu series called Full Swing. Wow. It just yeah. aired. It just started last night. You can binge the whole thing. I think I'm excited about it. It's it's filmed Dolby. You know, it's got its Dolby Atmos. It's got there its Dolby go. Vision. It's got all that stuff. And it's I think it I think it could be awesome. I don't know. I, we'll see. I'm going to check in this week. All right. Cool. I'll let you know. So Keith, I wanted to close this week. Yeah. Uh, you know, we got into the weeds last week about kind we of, sure did. And I think our boy J JD, who's always leaves. Thank you everybody for your comments. For, Last week's episode was really excellent having that conversation, starting that conversation, I should say. It's by no means solved. Oh, no, we fixed it, didn't we? Yeah, I thought so. Uh, but one of the things JD said was that it's really easy with all of the kind of Michigas and the thinking and the learning and the reevaluating and the, all of that to kind of just like shrug your shoulders and quit and say, nah, I'm not going to do it. Especially if you're like 40-year-old 40, 40 white guys like us, Keith, middle class who can like can have the privilege to do that to just be like nah i don't care mm -hmm. and my rad thing this week uh is twofold i have two things so so the idea is is to just say something that was fun and rad say something that was fun and rad and maybe just like is remind you that there's like good stuff happening too mm. right and maybe that will help that'll help rev the engine to like keep fighting the good fight you know, to do our part and to like not just shrug our shoulders and quit. So first things first, uh, my sister and brother and I used to be like thick as thieves growing up, man. We just like the closest, just the closest. And we got real close after my dad died, but then, you know, like life happens and uh, they had kids and then work and then kids and kids and kids. <laughs> and every time we try to schedule something, like I literally cannot tell you the last time I saw my brother and sister outside of their families. Mm. And so with that thought, I just shot a text out to my brother and sister and I was like, I love your kids, y'all. But like, what if we had lunch? And and even though it was difficult, really much for them to schedule, 
I sat down with my brother and sister. We just met up after work in the middle of the afternoon for like for a drink and a cheesesteak with my brother and sister. And we just like had a chat with nobody's kids around. I'd like mm. re, we rechecked in. And it like, and we all had a moment at the dinner where we rem- remembered like, hey, I, I really love these people. Like we're on the same team despite the BS and all the texting and the this and the that, all of the stuff that comes up. And it was awesome. And I was feeling pretty good about that. I was feeling pretty good. I felt that I had that I had established that. So I guess I'm saying, like, reach out to somebody, maybe. Hmm. But then, Keith, the rad thing that I'm picking for this week that kind of has re-inspired me, and it's a little thing, but I wanted to I wanted to put it on the table for conversation. I was going for, I was going for a run. I'd been sick for a while. It was my first run back, and I was running through one of the neighborhoods up here, and it was about three thirty. So the buses were letting the kids out. Okay. And I had my general, I'm grumpy, and I'm like, oh, these kids and their parents, and I'm, I find a reason to be upset. <laughs> oh, I have to cross the street, so I don't like the butt, whatever it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there's these two kids, um, and they were of differing ethnic backgrounds. Doesn't mm-hmm. even matter the specifics of it. And they were chatting, they were walking back from the bus stop to their little development. And they were clearly had just met, they clearly just met either like waiting for the bus or on the bus. They had, they were, these kids oh, were new friends, right? And they were just yeah. being back. And I'm running by them. And I didn't hear their conversation. All I heard was this one exchange. Kid A says to kid B, what was your name again? Dot, dot, dot. I want to make sure I say it right. Mm. And okay, whatever. I'm running, running, running. And then I'm thinking, 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 thinking. And I'm thinking to myself, no, 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 he didn't forget his name. He wanted to be reminded of how to say it properly. How to pronounce it. And I thought to him, and that kid, I'm t- I, I mentioned the best part. This kid was no more than nine years old. Yeah. He was seven, eight years old. That's probably a bit of manners he was taught. But I think for me, what I took was like, for the most part, that kid, he's just, he's just void of the general BS judgment, this, that, outsider, you're different. Blah. No, he's just a good dude. Yeah. Who like maybe has a new friend here and like, hey, I don't want to like make the mistake of saying your name wrong. That would probably hurt you in some way. Teach me how to say it right. Yeah. Well, it's 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 I I the kids are gonna save us. If anything's gonna save us, it's gonna be the kids. And and like just generally being respectful of each other's because obviously it wasn't Mike, it was something something, you know, difficult difficult to him. Yeah. Difficult to him. And like to just like, oh. I respect you. I want to get your name right and not having the, oh, you did. You've clearly, you're some sort of a leftist pussy because you wanted to get somebody's name right. Like, it's not a political thing. It's just basic human decency. (laughs) And it's very, it's it's very inspiring. You could probably go down the rabbit hole of like, well, it's sad, Mike, that 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 to you is so, so out of the box. But the truth is that it was inspiring. yeah. In the in the world that we live in, basic human decency is now political and controversial, and but it's not to the seven year olds. And they're happily they will replace us. <laughs> yeah, they will. So anyway, that's my rad thing. Is it, yeah. it was uh, what was your name again? I want to make sure I say it right. And I was like, Love yeah, it. man, yeah. I think so, that's great. All right, that's that's awesome. Um, yeah, I think you know. So so I I my rad thing right now is the thing that I I try to do at least three or four or five times a week, if I can. And that is, there is a a little park with a little lake just a couple of blocks away from my house. And, you know, part of my, as I've said in my uh, New Year's resolutions, part of what I'd like to do is get myself back into a healthier shape physically and mentally. And one of the things that helps do both of that is for me to go walk and uh, see a little bit of nature and see a little bit of a lake. And there's... Um, it's just this tiny little lake near, and there's a there's a walking path around it, um, and then there's this little area there where it's hard to even tell if it's a public park or not. But there's a pathway through the woods um, where you can actually get out into the woodsy kind of a thing huh. with a ten minute walk from my house, which is great. Um, and there's usually nobody there, and you get to just sort of like be there's lots of deer and and that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not some crazy hike. It's not some crazy thing, but it's just a really pleasant way to get your, get myself outdoors, see something pretty. And I think one of the nice things, um, you know, to sort of tie into what you're talking about, one of the, the great things about parks, mm. I think 
is that when you run across somebody in the woods, in the park, it's usually friendly. Yeah. You usually, you say hi and, and very frequently they'll have a dog that they're walking and I get to meet all sorts of nice, friendly dogs. And so it's, it's not, you know, it's not like, it's not this big thing. We're not going to sit down and have coffee, but it's just like, hi, it's just a general friendliness. Every, it's really hard to be an asshole when you're petting a dog and, um, and get to see that. So that's one of the sort of a rejuvenating thing that I try to do as many times a week as I can. And an, a, a privilege that I have living here, the ability to go take a little walk. And uh, yeah, I, I really add to enjoy that, it. When I'm doing that in this neighborhood, especially after living in New York for so many years, like we did two dec- over two decades, <clears throat> I find that that combined with my sort of general, often uh, crippling social anxiety mm-hmm. is um, the, the, the desire, or the, I wouldn't say the desire, the impetus to avoid eye contact or to like yeah. look at something over there to pass this person and just kind of let keep their autonomous sure. space, which is Very something we're so used to in New York. So I force, almost force myself in these suburban settings on these walks or a run or whatnot to be the one who gives a salute or a hello or a hi, right. like a how's your day. Gives the nod. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I'm happy to say that 90% of the time, they people don't ignore me. Yeah. Well, I, I, it, it's the same, same here too. And yeah. it's just like, you know, again, you're not like moving in with them. You're just sort of giving a nod, giving a high. And, uh, it's, it's, it's a nice little moment where all the rest of that nonsense drops off. Yeah. I mean, right? I, mean I, don't, to- I don't know who they voted for. I don't know yeah. whether or not they, whatever, but their dog is friendly and we can, and I can say what a cute dog. He must be enjoying this time in the woods. Hey man, let me tell you sometimes. Hello. <laughs> just a nice, I, do I, have I shared this before? I'll, I'll briefly, I'll briefly state it, very quickly. It's a much longer conversation, but I'm going to. So I'm no disrespect in its brevity, but that's no, no, it's perfect. Mike said half hour. We'll do a half hour. Yeah, sorry. Here we go. It's, <laughs> it's geekly. This is what happens. It's I uh, had a, a neighbor where I lived before, and I was walking to the to the, the subway, and I just saw them on the corner, and they just like they weren't. It wasn't. Oh, I know. I story. did tell you the story, yeah. right? Maybe I've you told. Did, it on yeah, we well, told me. I don't know. I think you might have told it on Oops, but yeah. it's definitely worth telling again. It, 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 just, it just, there was the vibe, right? It was just like, mm. so I stopped, even though I was in a rush. And I was like, hey, so-and-so, what's up? And they told me. They were just like, it's, stuff's falling apart, you know, things are going on. And so um, we had a chat. We chatted it out. We walked back. We sit, went to the corner bar. We had a drink. And I was just like, listen, man, you know. I can't promise you things are going to get better, but they're they're not always going to be this bad, right? But it, was, it wasn't like I solved anybody's problems. We just had a chat, sent him on his way. Not but like three weeks later, he stopped me again, and he's like, hey, I just want to let you know I was having some thoughts that day that I don't know would have turned into anything, but might have turned into a big thing. And yeah. he's like, you sent me a different way. You sent that, you you put those thoughts away, and I and I'm, and things are better today. And I was like, Oh crap! I basically said hey and took a walk with the guy, so yeah. that can have a little bit more meaning than 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 you might think. Is yeah. I guess that was that that was a lesson I learned that day. Well, and and that's like what what is this all about? Yeah, right. What what is what is this new segment about? What was our crazy discussion about last week? Just basic human empathy and and respect and not assuming you know what's going on in the shoes of the other person and yeah. and treating yeah. them with meeting them where they are treating them with some respect and treating them with humanity like that's that's all we can try to do that's what that little kid was doing that's what you were doing that's what we're all trying we're all trying to like make some sort of a connection make some sort of a have some sort of a like I, I see you, mm-hmm. right? I see you and you're valid, you know, whether you're walking your dog, like I see you, I see your dog. I acknowledge that you exist, you know, look, and I've, I've been on that walk, you know, I've yeah. been there sometimes when I'm walking by the lake, I'm in that, you know, I'm not like in that place, but I'm like, I'm not doing great. And I'm, I'm getting out here because I need to keep moving. And, and when you reach out, when you, when I get a text, when I get a whatever, it's, it's meaningful. Yeah. Especially so. when you start building into your life, like that you're the person who people are are leaning on, right? It might yeah. be a lot of people. It might be one person. It might be people that aren't even leaning on you. You just assume are, and so right. you are. It's difficult to feel like you can ask for help, even. Uh, so 
sometimes you yeah. can offer that help without being asked for it too. No, like, for sure. And there's, and you know, I certainly suffer from the narcissistic tendency that like, I think that I both need to be and somehow can be the person to help everybody. Right. <laughs> right? right and, right. and somehow, it, you know, inherent in that idea is that I don't need help myself. Yeah. I'm a yeah. helper, not a helpee. Mm. Darn it. And, and that's some narcissistic macho bullshit that I'm always fighting against. But, you know, we're, we're all susceptible to it. So listen, folks. Uh, there it is. Though I would love uh, like and subscribe, and I'd love for you to join the team at patreon.com slash KNDM. Yeah. This week, I really just want to hear what's your one rad thing? What happened? What's what's like a small thing, big thing, whatever? What's 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 a win? What's a cool thing that's happened? Let us know in the comments just to... Uh, just like to it. keep it light and bright. We'd appreciate that. In the interim, check out our other shows. We talk about every episode of Deep Space Nine week by week. We are in the penultimate episode of season two. Season three will right. start in a few. Um, Woo! And then we also talk about Star Trek toys. This week we are taking a look at, uh, well. The figures I don't have. He doesn't have. And then this weekend you're going to check out this. It's going to be Borg Nation, folks. Borg Nation. Uh, so check out that, uh, all of our stuff. You can check us out uh, here on YouTube. Whatever you do, just keep looking for our faces because we spent so much time making them pretty for you. Uh, <laughs> We appreciate you. Yeah, you. I'm pointing right at you. You're yeah. the one. We appreciate you and yours. Have a great week. Until the next time, this has been... Uh, uh, it, it, keep on doing the things that you find fun. Don't let anybody yuck your yum and keep on geeking on. Till next week, I'm Mike. That's Keith. This is Kane and Geek.